Hey guys, in this video, I want to give you some tips for treating a yin deficiency. So first and foremost, what is a yin deficiency? If you're not familiar with traditional Chinese medicine, Chinese herbalism, or if you haven't watched our videos before, then we should probably break down and explain some of this terminology. Now, looking at it from the traditional Chinese medicine point of view, this is gonna be important. We wanted to find these terms from their context. And in traditional Chinese medicine, first and foremost, yin generally refers to the cooling aspects of the body. It is referencing the matter of the body, so things like the blood, the organs, or the internal organs. Now, looking at an actual yin deficiency, a yin deficiency is obviously a chronic deficient state of the yin. Now, what that means in translation, though, is that there is an internal deficiency or an internal dysfunction of everything that is associated with yin. And the simplest way, I think, to look at yin is as the word in. So yin and yang, if you've ever seen this yin yang symbol before, refers to cause and effect, in and out. So yin generally refers to, again, the internal organs, the internal activity and functioning of the body, where yang generally refers to the external. It is sort of the potential action of the energy in the body. So these two are obviously interrelated and they affect one another. And in fact, when there is a yin deficiency, there can be a chronic or excessive uprising of the yang. So meaning that they sort of control and regulate one another. Also, one of the primary causes of a yin deficiency, what leads to this internal deficit state, which generally leads to chronic fatigue and weakness. And as we'll see in a moment, it's really all of the same symptoms of a thyroid deficiency or chronic adrenal fatigue or chronic fatigue syndrome. So those things are overlapping, we'll get into in a moment. And just like those conditions, a yin deficiency is most dominantly caused by overwork, chronic stress, or in traditional Chinese medicine terms, chronic excessive yang activities. So again, yang is referring to external outward motion, so the potential action of the energy in the body. So if you're somebody who is chronically doing, chronically working, these are yang activities. If you're chronically needing to produce energy all the time because you never relax and chill and go into one of these more yin internal sort of resting states, so if you're not balancing your body out with outward action in inward rest, then obviously you're going to create an imbalance somewhere here. And again, in this case, chronic doing of any sorts, whether that's excessive work, excessive exercise, always thinking, you're just always on and putting out energy. This is going to lead to an internal deficit, which results in, again, all of the symptoms of an energy deficiency. In fact, if we get into some of the primary symptoms of a yin deficiency, as I mentioned, there are a lot of the same symptoms of a thyroid deficiency, hypothyroidism, which is, in physiological terms, it is an energy deficiency that is also like a yin deficiency, mediated and driven and caused by stress. Excessive doing puts a chronic stress or pressure on the thyroid to always make energy, always deal with some sort of stress, and it can lead to the thyroid becoming burnt out through various physiological mechanisms. And if this occurs, just like in hypothyroidism or any chronic stress state, you get a lot of the same symptoms. Poor circulation, dry skin, and dry issues in general or dry conditions are major symptoms of a yin deficiency and thyroid deficiency because the yin controls the blood just like the thyroid governs circulation. So when the yin is sort of burnt up or dried out, then there's a lot of fluid issues. So not only dryness conditions, dryness of the skin, the nails, primarily dry skin and hair is where you'll see it the most, but it could also be like dry eyes, it has a lot to do with the poor circulation and the stagnation of the blood throughout the body, as well as the effect that chronic stress and yin deficiency has on cellular utilization of water. So one of the major symptoms of a yin deficiency is gonna be edema. So your body or your cells particularly are not utilizing and holding on to water efficiently, leading to 
the cells becoming sort of waterlogged. This is edema where the cells become waterlogged. It's water retention in other words, resulting in sort of puffiness. And this can actually lead to inflammation as we'll get into in a moment. But this causes dryness because instead of your tissues using the water for hydration, so your skin in other words, instead of the skin tissue being hydrated with water, the skin cells start to uptake excess water and this leads to again the puffiness and the edema. And edema actually is one of the precursors or something that's preceding inflammation. So the primary major symptoms you're going to see in a yin deficiency, poor circulation and all the symptoms of poor circulation, low energy, dryness, dryness conditions all over in inflammation and edema. These are all major symptoms again of a thyroid deficiency and they directly overlap with this concept of a yin deficiency. So now that we have a better understanding of what a yin deficiency actually is, how it manifests, so what are the symptoms? How do you know if you have this yin deficiency? As well as the major cause, which is really just stress. If we were to refine it in the most simplest of terms, anything that's related to excessive chronic doing, always being on, always working, always thinking, again, never resting, now we can get into some of the very simple things that we can do to start to correct this issue. Now really quick, once you're finished with this video, be sure to check out this other video on some of the best herbs for treating a yin deficiency. So that way you can get a more in-depth look at the various herbs and how they work to treat a yin deficiency. Otherwise, let's get into some very simple dietary and lifestyle tips for correcting a yin deficiency at the cause. So if it's not already obvious, my first tip is of course going to be to correct the primary or dominant cause, which is again, that overworking over stress. There's no magic pill that I can give you. There's no particular herb or diet or anything that's gonna help you do this other than you yourself. This is a very mental aspect of your health. The desire, the need to always be working, to not be able to chill and relax, as much as you might think that this is a physiological condition, and it might be to a certain extent, it might be that your nervous system is you know, always revved up and taking some things to help relax your nerves, like various nervine herbs, like skull cap, things like reishi, other adaptogens, taking things that lower stress substances, all those things could help physically. But at the end of the day, what I see is that people who are chronically working and always doing, these people are dealing with more or less a mental conflict than anything physical. So you're not going to be able to necessarily force yourself to start relaxing. If this is a personality trait that's been embedded in you for some time, it's going to take some time to become aware of it and undo it and dismantle it. So like most other things, the first step is awareness. Just simply become aware of when you're starting to push the boundaries. You're starting to become overworked, exhausted, and you know you need a break. And then from that point, maybe just ask yourself, Truly, what would be the worst thing that would happen if you just stopped, put it on pause, and just relaxed? Whether that's going for a walk in nature, whether that's just watching a sunset, doing something that you generally enjoy that's leisurely, maybe that's reading a book, playing an instrument, doing art, just sitting and listening to music, maybe taking a 10 minute nap. You know, there's various things that you can do that would fall under the category of yin, relaxing, non-thinking, non-simulatory. So just find the ones that interest you the most, that are the most enjoyable for you. And truly think about it. What would be so bad? What would be the worst consequences of doing that? Because I find that in the person who needs to always be doing is that in their own mind, there's some major consequence. There's some problem they're trying to solve by excessively doing. So in some cases, the person who always needs to be doing something, they just would rather not feel things. It's sort of a, a way to avoid feeling certain feelings. Maybe if they just sat with themselves, all of a sudden they'd start to face, you know, old repressed emotions, anger, sadness, boredom. So in many cases, excessive compulsive doing, always needing to stay busy, is a good way to avoid feeling other things. Now I can't say for sure what those feelings or emotions are. This is just a principle that I find that helps, especially if you're the type of person that always needs to be doing. Now there might also be more practical reasons that you're chronically busy and always doing. You know, perhaps you have a lot of bills that you need to pay, so you need to always be working to pay those. However, my personal point of view there is that there's always time to relax and unwind. And in fact, there are studies and in my personal experience that show that actually taking more time to 
regenerate and rebuild your energy will make you more productive. Now, I'm not saying don't work and put off your responsibilities. And this is something I find to be true for myself. I'm sure even the most successful people would agree that you don't necessarily get all that successful and wealthy by chronically working and burning yourself out. So just some things to consider in dealing with a yin deficiency. If you're somebody who's overworked, overstressed, find why it is that you push yourself and never let yourself rest and then proactively take steps to just relax and chill more. My second tip would be looking at some dietary tips or therapies that could help with the yin deficiency. And as controversial as this might seem, given the subject matter I'm about to discuss, some of the things that you'd actually probably want to increase your consumption of in a yin deficiency is going to be protein, saturated fat, cholesterol, salt, and sugar. Now I know that these are the primary things that people say, oh, they're so unhealthy. They're what give you every disease, diabetes, they increase your risk for cancer and cardiovascular disease, etc. But that's simply not true. And I won't dive into depth about that in this particular video. I kind of debunk those myths a little bit here and there in every video. But the fact of the matter is the reason I say that these food groups, if you will, are important in a yin deficiency is because they are the nutrients that increase in requirement under stress. So meaning when you're stressed out, your body uses salt more rapidly, it uses sugar more rapidly, it uses cholesterol more rapidly for hormonal conversions, it uses more protein to fuel the liver so the liver can cope with the stressors and the various stress hormones that it's going through and all the toxins and the inflammation. So in regards to nutrition, of course, as always, keep it clean. You know, that's a basic principle. Always make sure that you're eating at least real food and natural organic food, if you will, as clean and close to the source as possible. But from that point, you just might want to increase your intake of overall calories because again, calories are an energy supply. When calories are too low and you're getting incredibly stressed, your thyroid isn't going to have enough energy to produce energy overall to cope with stress. And again, getting into those other things, sugar and salt, again, from natural sources, you know, just eat real salt, get your sugar from natural sources like organic ripe fruits, raw honey, maple syrup, natural sugars are going to be helpful in replenishing the yin because ultimately the yin is depleted by stress and your body under stress uses more salt, it uses more sugar. It uses again, more cholesterol to make various hormones. Cholesterol is the building block the precursor to every hormone in the body. So when you're chronically stressed out, your body's using more cholesterol to convert it to protective hormones to sort of cope with the stress. And then again, protein is another important one. And in general, saturated fats have a lot of anti-stress mechanisms. They are protective against stress. They fuel the thyroid. So coconut oil in particular is good for nourishing the thyroid, giving the energy to cope with stress. So a general piece of dietary advice in a yin deficiency, get enough calories, uptake, increase your intake of protein, probably 1.5 grams per body weight, increase your intake of cholesterol rich food. So maybe eat some more butter, have some eggs, some good quality animal products and sources of cholesterol will be beneficial for coping with stress. And then increase your intake actually of salt and sugar. So again, make sure you just get them from natural sources, you know, get a good quality salt and sprinkle it on your food more liberally. Or if you notice you're becoming stressed, just take a quarter teaspoon of salt and water and that can help to stop the stress response in various ways. And same with sugar. I find that the combination actually of coconut oil, raw honey and salt can be very therapeutic for stopping the stress response and giving your body the basic nutrients it needs to cope with stress. And the last and final tip I want to give you, although I sort of mentioned this already, is to just watch the video that we made on the best herbs for a yin deficiency. Ultimately, a yin deficiency is again a chronic deficient state. It's a stress-driven condition that results in many different deficiencies regards to energy production, the proper circulation of the blood and things of that nature. So some of the best herbs you're going to probably want to take in regards to treating a yin deficiency are a lot of these adaptogenic anti-stress herbs that nourish the adrenals and kidney, they nourish the thyroid, and at the same time, these will have systemic beneficial effects on 
things like inflammation, edema, and other symptoms of a yin deficiency. So again, just to spare you some time here in this video, just head over onto that video and get some herbal recommendations. But now from this point, you have three broad range tips for correcting and dealing with the yin deficiency at the root cause, which focus on the most important factors and sort of forget the rest. So hopefully this video has refined the subject matter of a yin deficiency and has given you some simple, actionable steps that you can start taking today to deal with the yin deficiency and ultimately restore your energy. So if you've enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for future videos if you haven't yet already. And if you're interested in learning more beyond the realm of our YouTube channel, definitely be sure to check out our blog and our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.